So Tyron and I have decided to do something a little bit different. We're going to put together a cool little skill series for you guys. Uh, we get a lot of requests, obviously, on ride technique, turning, straightaway stability, how to set your ski up, and all these different things. So uh, we, yeah, we decided, hey, let's listen to what everybody wants and uh, try to put out some videos that have uh, a little bit of uh, you know information and a little bit of riding technique. So this is going to be the first one. And um, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about turning. So how do you to do the perfect turn? We just steer the bars and look where you want to go. No, we wish it was all that easy. Um, obviously, turning a stand up is one of the most important and skillful things that you can do riding a stand up watercraft. It takes years and years and years to perfect. Nobody really perfects it 100%. It's kind of like golf. You can never hit the ball perfectly every single time. Uh, you can never get a hole in one every single time. And it's the same as turning your stand up. You know, there's a lot of technique, there's a lot of different water conditions, different skis, different setups. Uh, different riders and uh, yeah that keeps it interesting and I think that's what keeps us coming back and trying to get better and trying to master these things because uh, the cool thing about riding stand-ups not everybody's good at it so the more effort you put in and the more work you put into riding a stand-up it shows in the water yeah if you put in the work you can see it you can see it at the races you can see it at the lake and uh, there's no way way for you to buy talent. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be the first little episode. We're gonna keep it pretty simple and we'll get into more depth as we go. But uh, yeah, how to do the perfect turn or as close as you can get to the perfect turn. So when you're riding, the things that I kind of concentrate on, obviously you take a turn, you've got three parts to it. You've got the entrance to the buoy, you've got the apex, which is the part of the turn on the buoy, and then you've got the exit of the buoy and the exit of the turn. So depending on what ski you ride, the entrance to the turn needs to be done in a slightly different way. If you're riding something like a 701 two-stroke superjet, that ski, you know, they come out the box 46 miles an hour, good limited, 55, 56. Uh, they're not massively powerful. So you, the fastest way around the racetrack is going to be making the racetrack as small and short as possible. And by that I mean riding as close to the buoys as possible because you don't have a bunch of speed to be able to carry through the turn. And uh, with the ski being a little bit slower and a little bit smaller, its tendency is more to be a point and squirt, snap turn boat, get in the corners as quick as possible, get a tight turn and get out as quick as possible. That typically will, will be your fastest way around the racetrack. Um, if you're riding something like a GP1, uh, it's got a lot more power, you know, you're talking a 66 to 75 mile an hour boat, your lines are going to be different on the racetrack. So, um, my best piece of advice would be is, if you're riding something like a Superjet, your entrance to the buoy is going to be tighter to the buoy on the way into the corner. You're probably going to be wanting to leave maybe two to two and a half widths of boat length. When I'm saying boat length, I'm meaning width of the boat from the way the boat is sitting to the buoy on your way into the corner. Where on something like a GP1, you're going to be coming in with a lot more corner speed. The boat has a lot more grip, so you can carry the corner speed. And that's the strength of like a GP1, for instance, is this grip um, and the ability to, to maintain the corner speed and the entrance speed into the turn. So with something like a GP1, you want to take where you ride your line with a Superjet, and you want to go at least two widths wider on your entrance into the turn. And uh, by doing that, you're opening the turn up a little bit more, you're able to keep your banked over speed through the turn, and you're able to keep that momentum so you can capitalize 
off the grip that like a GP1 hull has over like an OEM hull. So with the differences in the grip and the speed of the actual engine and the boat itself, you have to adjust your line. So for instance, something like a 701 two, stro two stroke Superjet, you're gonna come in maybe two to two and a half boat lengths outside of the buoy to start your apex in and it's gonna be more of a squarer, sharper, turn, um, really point and squirt, get as tight to the buoy as possible, where with something like a GP1 you'll be moving outwards, carrying more speed and using the advantage of the extra grip in the hole and then banging it through the corner. So on the entrance to the corner, just remember with a bigger, faster boat, you're going to be moving your entrance line outwards a little bit. So Superjet, two and a half boat lengths is kind of, you know, depending on the corner. That's the thing, not every corner is the same, but a rule of thumb is, you know, start, if you're going to get to a new track, kind of start off two and a half boat lengths wide of the corner, that's going to be your entrance on a Superjet, and something like a GP1, go maybe even like four boat lengths out, so you can maintain that corner momentum and use the advantage of the hull. Because if you are not adjusting your lines and you coming in with a big heavy boat, like a 1500 or a GP1, and you coming straight to the buoy, you got a bigger boat to try and slow down and to get it to turn, and the turning radius is going to be bigger because of the size of the boat and the momentum of the four-stroke engine. So with the four-strokes, you want to keep that momentum more, a little bit more like a road racing line that a road racer would use and use the advantage of the grip and of the engine and use the torque of the engine through the turn. So as far as body positioning goes, for me personally, and this is going to vary from rider to rider, but this is kind of like a starting point for you. When I come into the turn, I'm kind of off the, a little bit off the back of the boat as I'm approaching the turn, but then I shift my weight forwards and I put a lot of pressure through my upper body, through my shoulders, through the handle pole. So I'm trying to push a lot of pressure through the pole to the base bracket of the, of the handle pole and get the nose to bite in the turn. So I kind of come through, I shift forward, push all my body weight through the handle pole, through the bars, get the nose to bite, and that's where you set the turn. So I kind of come through, come into the turn on my back foot, transition to my front foot on the way into the turn, and then that's where the stuff gets pretty tricky. At that point, you are starting to carve your turn, you're over the front, you're starting to feed throttle on, and you're wanting to stay as tight to the buoy as you can. So where a rider's gonna pass you, like when I'm chasing somebody, I'm waiting for them to overshoot the buoy. As soon as they overshoot, I can come underneath them and I can make a pass. Back in the day on like 701 two strokes, it was very easy to pass people because there was so much skill involved with riding those boats. They were slow, they bounced, they didn't hook up, uh, they had no grip. Where the newer skis, all these race holes that are available, they are all much sharper and they do the majority of the work for you. So it's becoming harder to pass somebody. So you really have to be on your game to make these passes. So uh, yeah, like for me, I come in, I'm waiting for the guy to hopefully overshoot the corner. I'm gonna square him up and turn underneath him. So the main thing is to protect your line through the meat of the corner, is to turn as tight on the buoy as possible and not leave a gap for the rider to get underneath you. And he's typically gonna make that decision to get underneath you right when you are at the buoy. So, you know, if you watch any of my videos, you'll see I'm pretty much tapping every single buoy and it's because I'm shutting the line down. If somebody's gonna come in there, they're gonna have to move me out the way and I'm not planning on going anywhere. So, you know, I really concentrate on keeping that tight line on the apex of the turn and then obviously from there on, we move to the exit, which is like part three of the turn. But just so you know, to go around the outside of somebody is really difficult. So if you protect that inside line, you pretty much have got control of the corner. But you know, what happens with a lot of people is they, they overshoot the turn and then they try and square up when it's too late and try and come back in on the turn. And when that happens, don't be surprised if another rider, somebody like me that's trying to get in there and make a pass, you, if you've overshot the corner and you're trying to turn back, there's a good chance that you're gonna have contact from the rider behind you. And you know, people get upset because they say, oh, it's aggressive riding or, you know, but the truthfully, in racing, we gotta pass people and we gotta move forward. And if you've overshot the buoy 
and you are making a turn back to try and save the line, you've made your mistake already and the guy behind you, he's gonna capitalize on that and he's gonna get underneath you and he's gonna make the pass. And if you have changed your line and coming back into like the main line of the corner and he's committed to the inside, you kind of know what's gonna happen. You guys are gonna make contact and one or both of you are gonna go down. So, you know, protect that, that main line of the buoy some on the way into the corner people are going to really struggle to be able to come inside you or go around the outside of you because obviously jet skis don't have brakes so if you've carried good momentum into the corner you squared up and you shut the line down on the buoy you've pretty much taken care of what you need to at that point and that moves us on to part three of every turn which is the exit so the exit is actually super super important so back in the day uh, the boats weren't as good, you'd come out the corner, I mean, almost every time if it was a, not one of the top, top riders, the guy would bounce on the way out the turn. But the newer boats are really good, so they don't bounce and they allow these guys to get out the corner with a lot of momentum. So it's a lot harder now to execute that pass and to make it uh, count on the way out the turn. But if you go back to like your 701 two strokes and you're more of your like older generation skis, you really concentrate on getting underneath the guy through the apex of the turn because there's a good chance that he's gonna have a bounce on the way out and that's where you're gonna get him. So you can try and square him up, get hopefully he's gone two or three foot wide on the buoy, that gives you the gap to put your ski inside of him and then you can drive out the buoy and make the pass where something like a GP1, they carry a lot of corner speed, so it's a lot harder to do that. You really gotta commit much harder to the corner and really gotta look through the corner and commit to making that pass on the exit. Obviously, come in on your front foot, uh, on your back foot, exchange to your front foot in the meat of the turn, get that boat set nicely, hug the apex, and then carry your momentum out the turn. Some guys turn and they stand up too soon and they park the boat and then they would have like a pendulum effect and they wanna go over the high side of the boat and they have no exit momentum. So that's where guys will pass you. So you need to keep the boat banked over, you need to feed the power on. If you're riding a two stroke, you can just bang it 100% and you can use that, that two stroke snap to get you out of the corner as fast as possible. But if you're riding something like a four stroke, it's 160 plus horsepower, you're gonna come through there and you wanna roll it on, but you wanna roll it on pretty aggressively because the boats are good, they have big pumps in them, big intake tracks, so they can handle a ton of acceleration. So you really wanna capitalize on the exit momentum of what these hulls can do. So well, for me, I come in, I hug that apex, and I really bang the power on, and with a GP1, and actually for me on all boats, I come through the corner, I come into the corner, um, if it's a left-hander for instance, I come through, putting all my pressure on my front left foot into the buoy, but then when I start transitioning to the apex of the buoy, I put all my weight to my back foot. And what I do is I weight the back outside corner of the boat, which seems like a really, you know, common, like a, a, something that's a common sense for a lot of riders. But you'll be surprised how many guys still keep too much pressure on the inside foot. So I come through, I transition to from my inside foot to my outside. I really put a lot of pressure on the back corner of the boat. And I try and stand the boat up as quick as possible but while my body is still leaning to the inside of the buoy. And the reason why I do that is, me leaning to the inside of the buoy keeps the boat banked over enough to where my weight of my body is stopping me from having that pendulum effect and wanting to fly over the high side of the boat, but I'm able to get on the power so much harder and use the power and the grip of the GP1 to get out of the turn. So I weight the outside part of my foot to stand the boat up, because when you think about it, the quicker you can stand that hull up, the more water you can get through the intake track, the more water you can get through the scoop crate, and you can put as much power down as possible without the worry of cavitation and things like that. So I kind of come through, bang the corner, lean it, give it full gas, and lean with my outside foot and keep that exit momentum through the turn. And at the same time, I'm looking where I'm going. So I come to the corner, 
when I make that turn, I'm already looking up ahead and I'm already spotting my exit out the turn. And from doing it for many years, I'm obviously really comfortable on the ski. So when I'm riding, I could be mid-turn, I could be looking, you know, I'm already looking at the next turn, I'm looking where the guys are, I'm trying to really gain, like kind of target the next guy that I'm going for. So I'm really like aware of what's going on around me and I'm looking where I want to go though because like where you point your head or where you point your eyes that's where the ski is going to go. So come through the corner, lean it over, come through on your front foot, exit onto your rear, lean outwards to flatten the boat up, get as much water through the pump as possible, bang the gas on, look through the corner and keep that momentum out the, out the corner. And like I said, that is even more critical with the bigger boats, like the GP1s that have all that corner grip, because if you do not use the potential of the hull, you're wasting the ability to go faster. So use what, what has kind of been given to you with these newer boats, that the ability to have this excessive grip that we never had in like the early 90s, or even early 2000s, and uh, you know, just enjoy having, being able to push these boats much harder through the turns. Because the truth is, the boat can take more than what you can probably give it. So even for me, when I switched to like, like really racing the GP1s, and that was my focus, the, I was the weak point, and still today, I'm the weak point on the boat. The boat can take more than what I can give it. And that's, you know, I train harder, I put more technique into it, because I, I, I feel that the boat is above the level of pretty much all the riders at the moment. So it's up to the riders to kind of get to the level of the ski. So, hope this guy helps you guys. We'll kind of keep these videos coming. Tyron and I will be doing, you know, switching back and forward between different videos as we move forward. But this is the first one, kind of gets us started. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, keep a lookout for skills too.